in terms of the terrorists which have been neutralized in 2023 in the entire state is 71 51 are in valley 20 are in the rajori punch region own casualties in kashmir have been seven in rajori punch have been more have been 20 so yes in terms of the figures itself especially in rajori punch is something uh, that we have taken uh, note of now uh, even rahul asked this question so i'll not get into what what has gone wrong but i'll rather say as to what is it that we are doing right and there are six seven issues which i wish to highlight and the first one is the intelligence and the human network this was alluded to earlier so human is one strengthening our human network by us as well as by other agencies outreach to the local population perhaps part of this strengthening our ability to get techn technical intelligence in terms of communication etc that is something which we are working on we have increased or enhanced our deployment in those areas has also reorientated some of the units which were earlier operating the last five six months better synergy with other agencies the police the CAPF is something which again we are to, uh, you know that is one area which we are looking at certain tactical level lessons in each of these operations that we draw to be able to learn from them and then incorporate is another important aspect uh, which has been one of my uh, when I talk to commanders and soldiers there use of technology can we again in terms of your RPAs certain other things how can you use technology to again better deal with the situation my guidance to soldiers commanders there in is unambiguous in terms of respect for human rights zero tolerance for any actions on that account we have clearly laid down guidelines which spell out what you must do what you must not do in those areas uh, and of course for the soldiers to be able to act in a professional manner in whatever they are doing this is something which I have been emphasized, I have re-emphasized but let me assure you that our operation or counter terrorist operations in those areas will continue in a relentless fashion so that we get back to normalcy returning to that area at the earliest Does that, I think, Rahul, yours, and uh, Dinkar, <coughs> these questions? So also the level of training of just, just one, one. Rahul, yeah. then I'll let him hear. Uh, I mean, uh, the level of training of these terrorists, the way they are operating against us, the the against Well, that is part of, when I say tactical level lessons, uh, you always first study what is the adversary's modus operandi, method of operation, and then you evolve. So, that is something which we are studying and it is not or it may not be the same uh, something which uh, so that is an ongoing process which uh, we are paying adequate attention to and uh, was this uh, was there anything else or I think so no I think that's an issue in the yeah. past I really I'm not even tracking it so thank you very much for a for a very comprehensive uh, press brief and all that remains, I think, for the House is to hear beyond raise a round of applause for the Chief for no, having no, no, no. so There's much no of applause. time, sir. No, no, no. We have 35 minutes ahead. No, what we'll do, Snehesh, and uh, over a cup of tea, perhaps we'll, right? Because uh, you know, I have to go by what he's. Uh, but we'll certainly, whatever questions you have, uh, I, I'll be happy to take them on. So thank you, sir. The House is absolutely. 
All right, there, of course, uh, Chief of Army Staff General Manoj Pandey addressing and uh, briefing the media. He's spoken about a range of issues regarding India's uh, security as well. He has addressed Jammu and Kashmir. He's addressed uh, the LAC. He's also, in fact, addressed um, uh, use of technology as well as what has transpired in Jammu and Kashmir as well. As far as the situation in uh, Manipur is uh, concerned, he is stating that the army is aiding the civil administration, Assam Rifles and all units have given a good account uh, as well as uh, they have exhibited a lot of restraints, sometimes even against uh, provocations. But this is not all. He said that the situation at the Indo-Myanmar border is of a concern. Uh, you are aware of the activities of the Myanmar army and the ethnic armed organization and the PDF in the past couple of months, which has resulted in some of the Myanmar army personnel walking across about 416 of them uh, to date. Uh, not just this, he's also in fact uh, spoken on the situation in Rajori and Poonch and stated that in the last five to six months this has been an issue of concern. And He's also, in fact, commented uh, that there were around uh, 20 casualties in Rajori itself and what exactly uh, the army is doing on ground in order uh, to, in fact, uh, strengthen uh, intelligence as well as outreach to population using technology and how they are, in fact, uh, looking at carrying out their operations. He's also spoken about China and has stated, and I quote, that currently our attempt is to continue talks with China to go back to the status quo ante, which exists in the middle of 2020. Meanwhile, joining us on the broadcast is my colleague Ajay Jandal. Ajay, over to you. A press briefing by the Army Chief General Manoj Pandey. What else can you tell our viewers? Well, uh, see, the, uh, you know, Manoj Pandey, while addressing, uh, General Manoj Pandey, while addressing media, very uh, categorically said that, yes, uh, in Jammu and Kashmir, Rajori Punch area, the terror activities have increased, but uh, definitely Scottish uh, forces, uh, they, they are definitely are, uh, are in the alert mode and they are uh, thwarting by, you know, Pakistan's nefarious plan of pushing in terrorists because uh, I amid, you know, ceasefire, uh, ceasefire uh, you know, uh, uh, on the line of control in the uh, international border area and the Jammu and Kashmir, that is going on, but still Pakistan is continuously trying to push in the the terrorist over here. We have seen that number of time in Baramula, uh, Kupada, Punch, Rajori, number of uh, infiltration attempt has, uh, uh, you know, taken place, but uh, army thwarted most of the attempt and that indicates that how forces are alert. But terrorists, those who basically have entered inside the forest area and continuously trying to carry out major attacks, they are targeting the civilians, they are targeting the defense forces. They, he says that we uh, are definitely, uh, there is a challenge before last uh, several months that uh, uh, terror activities have increased in this region of Rajori Punch, but our forces, they are definitely um, ready to foil that uh, their plan of uh, uh, disturbing peace in this region and uh, they are continuously monitoring the situation as well and uh, counter, uh, terror operations are going on. As far as the technology is concerned, he says that we have, uh, we are using the modern technico uh, technology of anti-drone system on the line of control, along the line, uh, line of control and the other areas to thwart Pakistan's nefarious plan of uh, using drone to, to drop drugs and weapon in this region. We have seen the number of times these kind of attempts had taken place. So they are ready to foil uh, that as well. So technology is, uh, you know, uh, being used by the forces to uh, uh, thwart Pakistan's plan. Uh, but uh, still forces have uh, the challenge to uh, deal with such threats because drone uh, is the major threat uh, in this region because we have seen that number of times drone uh, drop the weapons which basically goes to the terrorist and <coughs> handlers so that they can carry out uh, terror attacks in the Jammu and Kashmir. Because reason what, why Pakistan is doing such things, because earlier they were trying to push in the terrorists with the help of uh, you know, ceasefire violation and other thing. But when uh, Indian Army, they, they uh, you know, retaliated effectively, what they have started doing, they, uh, <coughs> they started, uh, do, you know, doing using drones uh, for, for this uh, dropping weapon. They started using drone to drop the uh, drugs so that uh, with the help of these, uh, you know, drugs, heroin and other things, narcotics, they, uh, they, they'll be able to basically uh, once again revive terrorism in this region. So uh, Pakistan is continuously uh, trying certain uh, things, but forces, they are definitely alert and uh, they are continuously uh, trying to foil all the nefarious plan of Pakistan as well. 
Indeed, Ajay, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the broadcast, you know, presenting comprehensively the key details of what exactly the Army Chief has said. Meanwhile, joining us on the broadcast is Major Mohammed Ali Shah, defense expert. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you for joining us on NewsX. A very comprehensive press briefing by the Army Chief. He has addressed a range of topics right along uh, from the ceasefire along the LOC. He's spoken about uh, the JNK and the uh, security situation in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, he's also spoken about the LAC and talks with China. Additionally, he's also addressed uh, the Northeast, particularly the situation in Manipur, as well as the Indo-Myanmar border. He's spoken about the army enhancing its capability uh, via incorporating technology as such. And I'd first like to, in fact, address uh, the situation and the statements made uh, uh, you know, on Manipur itself. He has said that um, the army is, in fact, aiding the civil administration. The Assam rifles and all of uh, the units of the army have given a good account of ourselves. And I further go on to uh, quote what he said. And he said that they have exhibited a lot of restraint, uh, sometimes even against uh, provocations. But that is not all. He is also, in fact, uh, commented upon the Indo-Myanmar border with this regard and uh, has also stated that uh, the Assam Rifles is uh, posted on the ground at this point. Uh, they are, in fact, uh, conducting operations and are keeping an eye out on uh, the what is taking place along the Myanmar border. And he has stated that combined with the situation in Manipur, it is something that we are keeping a close watch on. We have close to 20 Assam Rifles battalions which are deployed at the Indo-Myanmar uh, border. What do you make of all of these statements and as well? well as uh, the army's efforts to ensure normalcy of peace. Firstly, I would like to say that, you know, I feel very elated that we have a very, very strong army chief at the helm of affairs, General Manoj Pandey, who holds the reign in a very, who is, who is got, I would rather, I would say this quote, an iron hand in velvet gloves. So, uh, I would say he has led the army in a very, very fine way. Now, the very fact is very elaborate press briefing by the army chief where he's addressed issues about the line of actual control. And let me uh, bring them one by one slowly and gradually. You know, he mentioned about that he want to continue talks with China as yet. And so that we can go back to the status quo that was there before mid-2022, mid-2020, when Colonel Babu was martyred along with 20 other brave hearts at Galwan. We all saw what happened at Galwan. He also mentioned that, you know, they have identified 355, 355 army posts from where they have asked for 4G connection from the uh, telecom ministry, where forward areas, airfields, helipads, they've been located. They would require that infrastructure very, very well. He also addressed the issue of the uh, Kashmir uh, uh, militancy, which you mentioned. And we said that security is very much in order. We saw a few days back, in fact, this about uh, two weeks back or so, General Manoj Pandey himself had gone towards to JNK and he addressed the people there. He made people feel that they are, he told uh, our soldiers also to conduct in a very in a professional manner. And so it speaks very highly. Now, when he has addressed this, the issue of Manipur, now comes the part which is very, very dear to my heart personally, because I began my schooling from there as a small child from the northeast part of India, and I have spent a lot of time over there. Now, when he addressed, when he spoke about Manipur as well, you know, Manipur, we have to understand one thing, as even the CDS, General uh, Anil Chauhan had said, when uh, the start of the problem, it's an ethnic problem, not a communal problem, not a communal problem at all. So the very fact is when he has addressed, incidentally and coincidentally, it coincides, coincides with just yesterday, 10th of uh, January, the, the, the DG Assam Rifle, the Director General Assam Rifle, Lieutenant General Pradeep Nair, PC Nair, he had gone to More, and we know that there was trouble in More, and he was uh, briefed by a very illustrious officer, um, uh, Brigadier Yadav was there, was the sector commander there, who gave a very elaborate briefing. He also met with the CSOs. CSOs are who? The, the civil uh, organizations, like, you know, they were other, uh, they, he met all the communities, be it Maite, be it Cookies, be it the Sikh community, be it the Tamil community over there, be it the Gurkha community. He met everyone and he assured them that the sobrika of Assam Rifle, which you mentioned, the of the friend of the help. In fact, this is an Assam Rifle tie, which I am being, uh, which I am wearing, which was presented to me at the Major Bob Karting lecture. 
So that's a, a different story altogether. Now the very fact when the army chief and the director general Assam Rifles, when they are army and the Assam Rifles, they are in tandem. They are. I had had the honor of being the ADC to the core commander, the GOZ3 core. Then I went on deputation to the Assam Rifles. So I can speak on both, on the both behalf. Especially in Manipur, the army and the Assam Rifles, both are doing a commendable job, human job, I would say. It's, it is something which is really, it is very difficult to serve in that uh, area. You have to understand the geography, demography, topography, history, the tribal culture, the tribal affinity, the communities, the... Because there are so many different communities. Like, for example, even in Maitis, they are Maitis Christian as well. And who would be having names like Laishram Raju Singh or Rohan in Manipur? Then they are Pangals. Pangals are the Manipuri Muslims. And in fact, 1972, the chief minister was Muhammad Ali Muddin, who's a Pangal. That's a Maitis Muslim. Now there is Salamite. That's which is a separate religion. In uh, Kangla Fort is the temple. Pakhanba is the god who they worship. So it is the understanding of that area it has to be very, very accurate. And the army and the Assam rifles. I have to really, and I, I'm not being biased over here, by the way. Not because I come from the army. I am in touch with my people, with my friends from uh, the northeast part of India, almost on a day to day basis. All my phones that I can't come are all from Manipur, in fact, incidentally from all tribes, all communities. So the very fact when the uh, army chief addressed a conference, they addressed a troubled state like Manipur right now at the moment. Manipur had uh, hosted the Feminamis India uh, in an international polo tournament and what not, you will name it, and Manipur was developing. And Manipur is a state which has contributed a great deal in nation building. We've had um, Mirabai Chanu, we had Maricom, we've had the best of sportsmen, the best of uh, literates, the best of academicians, they've all come from Manipur. So Manipur is definitely a state which cannot be neglected. And when the army chief speaks on that, at the hell of affairs, he is there. Of course, it conveys a loud and clear message to everyone. Uh, so I really say that the army chief has given a very, very elaborate, very good, precise, crisp to the point. And he's a no-nonsense person, in fact. When he was a brigade commander in Ak Aknur. Aknur is a place where I was commissioned as a young lieutenant way back in 20 years back. So General Manoj Pandey, as a brigadier, he was there. And his command has been flawless, absolutely. So the right man to be at the helm of affairs, the right man to actually lead the army and being in tandem with the Assam Rifles. And we have a very fine Director General Assam Rifles as well. Lieutenant Pradeep Nair, who I just mentioned about. And his staff, his BGS, his... Uh, 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 girl because of the PRO of the Assam Rifles. So they work in tandem. So the very fact, because you touched upon Manipur and it's a subject extremely dear and close to my heart and I get very, very emotional whenever I speak on Manipur especially. So when the army chief had conveyed a message, be it on JNK, be it on uh, China, be it on the, the northeast part of India, that's Manipur. Because in 2017 itself, General Bipin Rawat had said, uh, former CDS, he had said, he was the former chief and then the CDS, he had said that we India has prepared for a two and a half front war. And when he said two and a half front, he said Pakistan on the western frontiers, China on the eastern frontiers, and the internal militancy that we are, the terrorism from JNK, the internal militancy that we are, the challenges that we are facing. So the army chief has put a lot of people's anxiety at rest and the thought at rest because uh, I know I can't think that there can be a more crystal clear press conference than this and just yesterday as I mentioned there when the DG Assam Rifles had gone to Moray I don't think a loud and more clear message than that can be uh, I'll just quickly conclude by saying that the only way forward which the army chief and the DG Assam Rifles also says and the top brass of the army believes in which which is by winning hearts and minds of the local people because the local people are very they, when they support us, I, I, I'm just concluding by saying that, you know, when I was posted there, I was very fortunate that I had seen J, JNK and then the northeast part of India. So I had seen the operation on both sides. Every three months, every three months, we would donate blood. We would donate. We would have education camps, health checkups, health camps, eye checkup, eye, eye camps. And we would do, and like there is a Sadbhavna, op, Sadbhavna in Jammu Kashmir, in fact, where we have to win hearts and minds of the locals. So they are top generals. They believe in that. They are leading our uh, forces in the right way. And uh, my challenge to them, once again, Sir Jahinsa, thank you.
Uh, sir, I wanted to also ask a follow-up. We've addressed uh, the Northeast in particular, and you know, one of the points that was in fact raised by the Army Chief was that uh, about 30% of the weapons have been recovered until now. Uh, but apart from this, he's also spoken in depth about Jammu and Kashmir. He said that uh, there were about 20 people who lost their lives in Rajori, and the Army is at the point uh, strengthening their intelligence network. But at the same time they're also engaging in outreach to the local population and also uh, strengthening their technical power as well as incorporating new technologies uh, my colleague on ground had referred to the fact that drones are now being used to monitor uh, the movement of uh, terrorists there are in fact security has been beefed up a lot of terror attempts have been foiled uh, an IED was also recovered today itself on the ground um, so uh, and the army chief said some Something, uh, towards the end of, of his speech when he was talking about JNK that operations will continue in a relentless uh, fashion. How crucial do you think uh, such statements are in, in order to boost the morale of the officers and uh, the Jawans who are posted on ground? Question by you, you know, see the army chief, having known him personally and uh, having a lot of regard and respect for him, you know, he is a person, he is a ground soldier. And whenever he visits a forward formation, he always believes in meeting the ground soldier and the formation commanders on ground. And uh, he believes in soldiering on ground. Kya ho raha hai? He should know the right report because he always believes. In fact, a young officer, he would give a young officer a lot of importance also. A soldier, a jawan, he would give a lot of importance also. And the same thing, I found the same quality in the DGSM rifles. They're great leaders. And so when he addresses an issue of JNK and he says the our intelligence network is there, we have got they have I think we in the armed forces, we really believe in one thing. When the morale of the soldiers is high, like for example, I'll just quickly equate, equate it to for everyone to connect. Everyone would have heard the famous quote or famous saying or the, the how the Josh and when the film Uri. Well, that's not a dialogue from a film, by the way. It's a very, very common terminology in our forces which we use on a day-to-day -day basis to check the morale of our troops, to see how they are. And only when you have the morale of the troops going strong, you actually can function very well. I'll quickly conclude by telling you a small anecdote. In the year 2003, when I was posted the line of control, I was 30 meters away from the Pakistani post. We were manning the last post of the country and here was the Indian flag, here 30 meters away. In the middle, there was the electric fencing and here was the Pakistani post. On the neighboring post, we got to know that one of our soldiers has been wounded. And everybody was rushing towards there, okay. And the commanding officer, who the full colonel, he came to see his soldier. And the moment he came to see his soldier, the boy who was wounded suddenly got up with full zest, enthusiasm, energy, josh. He got up, saluted the commanding officer and said, Jai So that was the morale, that was the josh. See, right leadership, where it can lead to. And we are very fortunate that we have such people at the helm of affairs like... Uh, uh, like the army chief, General Manoj Pandey, like at the, you spoke about a, a Sam rifle as well, Lieutenant General Pradeep Naya. So we have such great leaders. So our, the force is definitely bound to do well under their command. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.